March 24th, 2017, 6 p.m. Spitfire Sentinel Channel. That's where it's going down. That's my plan. Gave this person three weeks to get ready. Three weeks warning. No negotiation. No pre-planning. Just a date, a time, and a place. You could be there or you cannot be there. That is your choice. I'm calling you out. So I heard after I scheduled this date and time without letting Judy know, she found out just the same way everybody else did on Facebook. Uh, no more games. That's the reason why. I'm calling you out. Now let's see if you have the courage to show up. All right. Shouldn't take much courage. Um, I heard first Judy was not going to be available on the 24th, this Friday, because uh, she was going to Mexico. Then all of a sudden, she wants to change the date to Sunday, March 26th. All right. I kept my Sunday open. I'll still keep my Sunday open, no problem. Then all of a sudden, now it's Saturday, March 25th. Ooh, okay, so I will be there March 24th. I will be live on YouTube, unedited, unscripted. I got my list of things I want to talk about, things I want to discuss. I hope Judy and Colin decide to join us. If they don't, well, that's on them. This is not the first time we've invited Judy on, but it is the first time that I've called her out. It's the first time where I said, look, be here, that's it. All right, choice is yours. Um, there was a question of whether she could actually respond to what I was saying. Of course she can. She's been watching everything. She's been looking at everything that we've been posting, but the one post she doesn't see is the one where I call her out. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. I'm sure somebody might buy that, but not me. I feel this person should be banned from the Facebook page. She's already been banned from the Facebook group, and I think the group has been better off for it. Um, now, of course, the, the, uh, the purpose of banning her is not to silence her. She, she can... I mean, I would think... I would think that, you know, Judy has so much passion about the official theory. I think she should start her own group, start her own page. And uh, then, you know, then she can really run, run the show. But I think it's over now. It's pretty much over. So if you don't show up on the 24th, there's a good chance you're going to be banned from the Justice for David Crowley of Gray State Facebook page. And I look forward to that. I believe you should be banned. You spend all this time running your mouth, running your keys, running your fingers on a keyboard like a true keyboard warrior, but you won't show your face. You won't show your face in the news art articles, and you won't show your face on a live forum. All right, okay. Typical keyboard warrior. Typical bully, typical cyber bully. Well, this bully just got called out. So show up or grow up and go away. Those are your choices. I stand by that. Because the games and all this BS cannot keep going on like this. And uh, yeah, I, I too, I'm very shocked that Judy has not been banned. And I think that... Um, that speaks a lot about the Facebook page there because they are very tolerant and they have been very tolerant of all of those comments and even the comments that I see. I should not see anything. I've blocked this person. I've blocked Judy. 12 uh, counts, whatever it is, blocked them. Collins blocked them. She's posting as Colin, not realizing she's logged in as Colin Proc now. Block. All right. So, I mean, the weird games and all this stuff, it's just got to stop. It's not helping the family. It's not helping the friends. It's not helping anybody. It's only drawing more attention to the theories that, hey, wait a minute. Why is this so 
why is this person so convinced that David Crowley is guilty? And what is it based on? So I'm calling you out to find out exactly what it is based on. Not on a keyboard warrior way, all right? On a live forum where we can go back and forth. You can ask any questions you want. You can say whatever you want. You can continue to slander me if you choose to. But you're being called out now. So what are you going to do, coward? What are you going to do? This is it. This is your last chance. You have an open forum. Welcome to the resistance. Uh, so back in May of 2016, Judy and I were kind of going back and forth, trying to find a good time, a good date, where her, myself, and Colin Procknell could all have a recorded session, unedited, basically live, um, recorded session that we could all have a discussion about the varying topics and just kind of clear the air, get everything out there. And everything seemed like it was going to happen. And then she called me a chicken shit. And I just, I was just like, you know what? I would love to have a conversation with a rational person, but I'm not gonna, going to get sucked into an argument. And that's where I felt this was coming from. The proper context is that we were going to have a discussion this person started calling me names, accusing me of being a coward, of chickening out. And it turns out that she had to send me another email after that to apologize for the fact that she called me all of these names and told me that mine and Dan's day will come, blah, blah, blah. Because the email that I was uh, sending to her uh, was in her spam file, so she didn't see it. So she thought that I was just not responding to any of her messages. Um, so she realized that that was not true. She apologized, which is cool. But then she still goes on to tell me I'm still a coward and I'm not a Christian and Christians don't do this, Christians don't do that. So again, it's back to the same thing. It's like, is this person bipolar? Is Is there... Is there two Judy's? <laughs> Can I talk to the real Judy? Can I talk to the nice Judy? You know, to the one who um, seemed like a rational person when this whole thing started. Um, where Where's she at? That's the one that I wanted to actually talk to. But it was like a flip of a switch. Um, in June of 2016. And... That just left me with the feeling of, you know what, I'm not going to get sucked into an argument with this person. I'm just going to kind of, okay, obviously the uh, discussion is not going to happen and blah, blah, blah. I mean, in, in the one email, at least in one of these emails, Judy admits that she did lie. She's a liar. She'll tell you that. She has no problem with that. She says, I was lying. This is from uh, June 17th, 2016. She wrote, I was lying when I said that I saw what David had handwritten about his wife and child. And since then, I have seen much, much more. So she did not see what was on the wall. But she did see what was in the house. I mean, it's these type of things that are that just show me that this is not a sincere person. This is not a person who really wants to try to help us understand why David Crowley is guilty. Not that I... The difference between me and Judy is that I have not accepted any one theory, and this person has. So that's the big, big difference. Okay? I'm still open to the possibility that David Crowley is guilty, and I'm still open to the possibility, maybe he's not. But let's see where the evidence goes, right? How many times have you heard me say that? Well, I'm going to keep saying it. Where does the evidence take you? Why do you believe what you believe? And what is it based on? It's very important. And a lot of the criticism always goes back to the same BS, that we all think it's a government hit, all right? It doesn't have to be a government hit. 
you know what the definition of a government hit is? Do you know how many people within the government have to be involved for it to be an actual government hit? Not very many. Try one. All right? But nobody's saying that it is a government hit. But, of course, we're going to look down that road and see. And in light of some of the new WikiLeaks stuff that has come out, I mean, with Michael Hastings, not directly pointing the finger at Obama or not directly saying that Michael Hastings was a target, but those leaks really make you understand that these things are possible. And for a lot of us, it was nothing that we didn't already think. But when the evidence pours in, of course, you, you have to take it seriously. Um, like I said, I've never been a fan of the project. Never will be a fan of the project. Didn't like the project. Probably did not agree with David on a lot of things. Probably did not agree with David's friends on a lot of things. But um, that's okay. There's something here. There's something else going on here. And we're going to get to the bottom of it. If it's God's will. If it's not, hey, it's enough to know that God knows. Kamel's father said the same thing. Kamel's father spoke with Dan Hennon, told Dan Hennon, no matter what, God knows. And that's enough for him. Maybe it should be enough for me too. Maybe it should be. Maybe one day it will be, but I'm not there yet. Remember, I'm an outsider. I don't know everything that these people know. I wasn't there, but neither were they. So it's all second-hand, third-hand information. All of it. Unless you were there when the murders happened. You really don't know much more than us. The police obviously didn't know, didn't take the time to know the stuff that they should have known. So, here we are. Will this documentary that is made by, uh, at least that is, the Mason Hendricks is a co-producer or a pro producer on this film, all right? So of course it's gonna have some bias. Of course they're gonna be coming from that angle of the guy's, the guy's guilty. What could trigger a person to do that? What paranoia could make a person go down that road, blah, blah, blah. So if Judy didn't see what David wrote, allegedly wrote, on the wall, what did she see? What did Colin see? Something that looked like mannequins? So this will be the big focus for the 24th. And if the coward doesn't show up, I hope whenever she is given that, ch that chance to say whatever she wants to say in a live forum, that she will explain this one thing. What did you see? What did you see when you walked in or when you peered through that window? How far did you get into the house? If you didn't see the wall, is there other things maybe you didn't see too? I think the other question, the bigger question, somebody brought this up couple weeks ago uh, why would this if you listen to the 911 call the transcript of the 911 call one of the first things Judy Procknell says is I think this might have been a murder or a suicide something like that really you're really gonna I mean who who says that who's who, why would you even assume any of that stuff it's like planting a story and if you look at the actions of this person in the group for the little time that she was allowed to be in the group. And if you uh, hear, like I hear, third hand, second hand, some of the stuff she's still posting on the Facebook page, it's like, what is wrong with this person? Is this the same person? So maybe I'm setting myself up after I, I said, I'm not going to have anything to do with this person that I believe is not mentally stable. And I truly believe this is not a mentally stable person. But I'm going to give it one last chance, one last chance to have a conversation, to have a debate, 
to have a discussion, whatever you want to call it, but I will not have an argument with this person. Last chance, last call. Will you stand or will you fall?